Hi everyone, we've got an extra review for today. I'll tell you about Fab Filter Pro Q2 plugin. I'm receiving a whole lot of emails, and the main question is what are the advantages of new version of Equalizer over its first version? So let's take a brief look at the new features of this amazing Equalizer. The plugin interface has not changed much. There are under reader buttons at the top. Click on under cancels the last change. Reader restores previous settings. The plugin also can operate in two states, A and B. It is designed for easy comparison of equalizer settings. Copy button allows to duplicate an active state to inactive. Convenient preset manager, help button. Super cool analyzer. This is a new feature and manufacturer is very proud of it. I must say that Analyzer is very progressive, informative, and extremely responsive. Analyzer display is scalable, from 3 to 30 decibels. 3dB scale is intended for mastering while providing minor sound changes. 6 and 12 decibel scale is for mixing when getting more impact on sound. 30 decibel scale is for tracking and mixing changes with extreme parameters. Close to the volume meter at the right of the bottom bar, there is a resize button for resizing the GUI from tiny to extra large. Now we can optimize plugin graphical user interface to fit any monitor screen. MIDI control settings are similar to the original Pro-Q version 1 controls. In addition to zero latency and linear phase equalization, we've got natural phase processing mode. Developers claim this mode as analog-like. As usual, linear phase mode has five options for resolution quality. All modes except for zero latency produce some latency. <laughs> for natural phase mode, the latency is approximately 5 milliseconds at 44 kHz. AQ Global Output Control provides operation in normal mode, left-right for left and right channels, or in mid-side mode for separate mono and stereo signal components. Analyzer. Here we can see the frequency response curve. In post-state or after processing, and pre-state or before processing. Before, after. Analyzer settings. Tilt steepness setting for spectrum slope from 0 to 6 dB per octave. Release speed of the spectrum from very slow to consider all the details up to very, very fast. Resolution. At the lowest precision, we practically can nothing to distinguish while getting just an overview of our input and output signal. Maximum resolution settings allow to see almost each node clearly. The range settings specify the vertical range of the spectrum analyzer, from 60 to 120 decibels. Default value is 90 decibels. Please notice that the settings pop-up behavior is different when pressed and when the mouse over. When pressed, they remain visible. When you hover a cursor over, they disappear after a while. The Spectrum Grab feature. Hover a cursor over the frequency response curve and it seems to be frozen. Also, we can completely freeze the peaks of our signal. This freeze option can be quite handy in some cases. AQ match mode is used in conjunction with the sidechain operation. 
click the sidechain frequency response curve display and post button. Then click EQ match. You will see how the normal input signal is adjusting to the signal that passes through the plugin sidechain input. Using the slider, we can make some matching adjustments with a core settings for one band or more precise for 24 bands. Here is the output level control. In mid-side mode, it's operating as the balance control of the mid and side signal components or mono and stereo level. In left-right mode, it turns to a typical pan control for left-right. Plug-in bypass button. Phase invert toggle button. Show height analyzer output level meter and auto gain buttons. Auto gain is a very handy feature intended for preserving output signal level against input after AQ processing. However, it is worth nothing that auto gain feature does not work quite adequately in compressors and equalizers. It's due to the fact that we can make changes at different frequencies, but the human ear is most sensitive in certain range from 2 to 8 kHz. Thus, we subjectively can perceive sound with low frequencies enabled to gain a quieter output signal. Please notice that if selecting node on EQ curve, a small box with its settings pops up. Here we can choose the filter shape for a node. Bell, low shelf, high shelf, same as in the previous versions, low cut, high cut. Note that the maximum slope value previously was 48 decibels per octave. Now it's 96 decibels at maximum. Noge filter mode is used to remove blemish sound. All from the left and right left unchanged. Everything that comes into the notch filter is removed from the signal. As for me, notch filter operation in Voxhango Gliss AQ is more convenient. Notch 4 and notch 8 modes. Here we see the first harmonic, which is fundamental, then the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh, etc. This is to ensure that we can filter the additional harmonics of our signal. For example, let's take a look at the sine wave on the spectrum analyzer. Just like this. Dealing with a complex signal, not a sign but so for instance, we got the first harmonic, the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh and so on. Now I hope you understand the importance of Notch 8 mode in particular. The new equalizer from FOB filter doesn't provide this mode. There is only a typical notch. Band pass mode is very easy to configure. In my opinion, it's applicable for radio set or phone speaker simulation. Frequency knob sets the frequency. Gain knob boosts or attenuates the signal. Q knob sets Q factor value. 
Game queue interactions is a very interesting feature that allows to add more analogness to the sound of our equalizer. Each node can be assigned to the left channel, or a right channel, or we can click the scissors icon to split it to the left and right. When switching the global output mode to mid-side, left and right turn into mid and side respectively, for processing mono and stereo component of the signal. There is one more very interesting mode, and I've often felt the lack of it. In Pro-Q2 it's named Piano Display or Piano Cable Display. Let's look how we can obtain the benefits of this mode to accelerate the mixing or mastering process. Here is the bass guitar part. Keep an ear out for low notes, the first and second sounds ok, the third is quieter, the fourth is louder, the first, the second, the third is quieter, the fourth is louder. Previously we used our ears or precise analyzer to locate the exact notes played on bass in this case. Now everything has become much easier. Select the required note. This is D3. Let's boost it. Then we attenuate note B3. You can also operate with the aid of instrument, in other words to be geared to the analyzer. Thus, we eliminated so-called jumping out resonant bass notes. Of course, for the real bass player, I would use dynamic equalization or rigidly squash the bass sound with a compressor. Left-right mode can be used for quasi-widened of stereo field. Split the node to the left and right channel by clicking the scissors icon. Do the same for high frequencies. In my work I like to use mid-side mode, especially for mastering. For example, unpleasant artifacts in upper mid-range from 2 to 8 kHz I remove only for mid-component. So I get rid of Biden upper middle to ensure wider sound. I mean that it's not necessarily to use stereo expanders to achieve a really wide sound. Sometimes the mid-side equalization is enough. What's on the downside of Pro-Q2? The most important characteristic of each equalizer is its sound. Let's carry out a little test. Add bell filter, set the Q factor at maximum, gain at 30 decibels, frequency at 100 Hz,
I'll use the same settings for DMG Audio Equic. 100 30 dB Q factor at the maximum. Now, let's listen how will our equalizer affect on sound at extreme settings. The effect is very obvious. Now let's try with natural face. The same result. Switch to the linear face minimum quality. Ringing is gone. Let's increase quality. Again, there are similar artifacts. Maximum quality. The same at maximum quality. That's weird. Post here what do you think about it. Why artifacts that have not been noticed in the low quality mode are present using maximum quality settings. Let's listen how a quick works. As you can see, in the linear mode, artifacts are missing too. Well, to sum up, I like the plugin very much. We've got double performance boost, very cool analyzer, which is running now in full screen mode, the natural phase EQ mode for a very gentle processing and the auto gain feature. On the other hand, as for me, a QMage mode is not much needed except for maybe the recording and dubbing of announcers. Sound on extreme settings is questionable. Also, some users have mentioned bugs. Personally, I did not notice any glitches during testing. In short, your choice. Give it a try. I'm Andy Vax. Domo Mr. Roboto.